the pivot step. So it's a, it's a normal one, it's a lot less can go wrong. Basically get to the ball, you stay down and your right hip comes through the ball without any jumps, not too much movement, okay? So it's gonna look like this. Step to the ball, follow the ball and your hip goes through over here. Very safe shot, good one to use if you want to go to the net, not a bad one. Check out this one guys, Chow, this is a big one, people don't realize. And players, a lot of players want to have the exact same swing every single time. Trust me, that is a mistake. The reason why that is a mistake and I fell into the trap is because how can you have the exact same swing every time if you don't get the exact same ball every time, okay? The biomechanics can be the same all the time, but not the same swing. One example I'll give you is if I have a short ball and I want to get it in autom automatically my follow through will be a little bit shorter right if I go all the way back and I have that exact same follow through guess what ball's gonna go into the net in the same way when I'm all the way back here and I want to get the ball deep obviously you want that swing bigger longer fuller to get that ball deep and I'm going to show you, and I know you already know what's going to happen. If I do that same swing on the short ball, you guessed it, it goes out. I fell in this trap, I, I was very stubborn as a youngster. I thought I wanted to look the same every single time, but you can't. Different ball, different swing. Okay, one example is short ball will be a shorter swing, deep ball will be a longer swing. As I have said this before, but a lot of you haven't watched all my videos, so I can't skip this, it's so important. Many players, when they lose their rhythm, what they end up doing is they plant themselves too early, okay? So the ball is wide, they plant, and they think they're in position. It's so important, guys, by simply being active with your legs and giving more steps, you gain rhythm, you get your rhythm back, okay? So it should look like something like this. Even if you feel like you're already in position, give a couple extra steps around that ball, backhand positioning, through, okay? I'll show you one wrong one on the backhand. So the ball is wide. I'm planting myself because I think I can get away with it. But that exact same ball, give more steps and you'll get your rhythm back. Where do you contact the ball on your forehand? Well, anywhere in front of your body. It should never be behind you, okay? What if I had to tell you that if your grip changes, your contact point also changes? For example, eastern forehand contact point will be around about there. All right, look at my racket. I want you to notice what happens if I change my grip. So I have to keep my string square to the ball forward, right? So now I'm gonna to go to semi-western forehand. If I want my string square, look what happens to the contact point. It goes forward and up. Full western, if I want my strings square, it has to go even higher and more in front. This is why all three were in front of my body, but it changes as I change my grip, okay? But it's always in front of the body. Okay guys, be careful of, when you're doing your out, inside out forehand, don't fall out of it when you're busy hitting it. So I'm not loading and then I fall out of it. That ball can go anywhere, okay? What you need to do is move quick enough so that you can load and then go forward on your inside out. So if we look like this, I'm moving quickly, load, forward, okay, recover. Okay, I'm moving quickly, load, to my target but if I don't load I can't do it one more quick movement load move quick enough so that you can load okay guys Eastern forehand semi Western forehand full Western forehand if you look at the racket it's got different bevels right and there's a bevel there and it goes through all the way there's different bevels all right and uh, it goes from one all the way to eight all right so if you look at your forehand eastern grip it should be bevel number three and uh, so there's bevel one bevel two bevel three so there's the bevel but how do you hold it so if you look at your hand your hand what should touch the bevel is from that knuckle through to your palm if that line touches the bevel you should have the correct grip. So I'm going to first show you the Eastern. So I'm putting the Eastern grip on there on bevel number three. And uh, it's also a great way if you're trying to change your grip 
from eastern to western or other way around it's a great way to check every now and then hey is my hand still in the right position for the specific grip okay so that's number one i'll just show you two demos again eastern grip all right roger federer plays with this one uh, more often than not he sometimes goes a little bit over okay now let's go on to semi-western i'm only going to take you through three three grips and four ends today semi-western is bevel number four so one two three four right then you put the exact same part of the hand on number four and there you go you have semi-western also known as the pan pan grip a lot of beginners serve with this please don't ever do that but that is the grip it's also the grip a lot of a lot of coaches teach especially in the beginning um, you just pick it up and you should be on semi-western all right i'm going to go uh, into more advanced details soon so be sure to stay tuned so here's the semi-western grip just giving you demo more or less what it should look like and then lastly very extreme full western which is bevel five uh, i don't recommend it although a lot of pros use it um, i could be talking under correction but catching off might be using that you might be semi-western as well um, but it's completely over and if you're looking to hit a lot of topspin that could help you but it is quite risky according to me as if you're unsure of where to turn on your forehand i want to make it very simple today just make sure that you're not having your elbow too close to you elbow is too close to you losing out on power racket head speed now if you're unsure of how high should it be don't overthink it as long as your elbow is away from you it will be high enough and you'll get enough power and spin so elbow away then you hit it elbow away i'll show you one more elbow away so instead of overthinking where your elbow should be just make sure it's far enough from the body